So, Shonaka, you're head of the Oxford Centre for Hindu Studies. Uh, what do you think is the impact of the coronavirus on religious practice and belief, but particularly the Hindu community? Well, um, every community, as you have said, uh, has to deal with this. It's interesting, um, everyone's gone online. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Hinduism is no exception. Uh, Indians are tremendously good at technology, <laughs> as we know. Um, so pujas and all the temple um, uh, ceremonies that people would expect to go to a temple for are all now online. Darshan, as they say, to go and see the deity and all online from 4.30 in the morning till 9 in the evening. Um, in India, originally, they um, closed down all the temples and then began to open them up again, not for congregation, but for this facility so that um, people could have access uh, on a daily basis, an hourly basis, to um, ceremonies in the temple that were performed on a very small scale, or even just seeing the forms of the deity, uh, which just brings comfort to everyone. So that, that's been uh, tremendously interesting. What's been a, a little bit uh, more grim, but just as interesting in a sense, uh, dealing with funerals. Now, there is in Hindu culture, um, when people retire, they go on pilgrimage. And this is a major part of the Indian um, uh, tourist industry, actually. Um, uh, people go on pilgrimage, but they're elderly, and they often don't come back. So there has always been worked into, this, into the system what they call unusual death. So in that circumstance where you don't have a body, you create a body out of straw. The priest does this and performs the um, cremation rite. And the theological thinking behind it is God knows where the person is. And if the priest calls that person into this straw and says to God, this is a proxy, can we now have the ceremony? Um, it's done. Uh, the ceremony only takes half an hour. Uh, and, and you can do that any time after the death. So there's no, we can, we can do that when everything opens up again in many cases. Um, in the immediate sense, um, uh, patients have been listening to chanting by earphone uh, in hospital wards. Chanting is very important to Hindus at the time of death, chanting the name of God. Um, in the Attenborough film um, uh, of Gandhi, so Gandhi, the famous scene where he's assassinated, and he says, oh God, oh God. And that's kind of like, oh God, I've been shot. But he actually said, hey Ram, hey Ram, which is chanting Ram, the name of God, a name that means the reservoir of all pleasure. And he was going to a prayer meeting where he would be chanting that name when he was shot. So that just gives us an idea. For a lot of Hindus, he's a Mahatma, a great soul, because at the end of his life, in such an extreme circumstance, he was able to chant the name of God. That focus was, was the issue, not as much as politics. So the, a lot of Hindus are supplying, and a lot of hospitals have been very helpful in supplying the ability for people to hear chanting or, or to chant at that time. And do you think the coronavirus is actually bringing Hindus in the UK closer together? Because it's a fairly disparate community, isn't it? Uh, yes, but it, um, well, we can say that on one level. On another level, it's very family oriented and very community oriented. There are communities of family groups and they're very coherent and they are actually very together. So one of those groups is um, uh, providing 3000 meals a day to um, uh, care workers and uh, the fire service and the police service just in the London area alone. So a lot of, a lot of groups are doing a lot of things on the ground locally uh, from a family oriented perspective. Um, that are very effective. In India, three of those groups got together. Um, the Hare Krishna's uh, uh, Amrita group, um, which is a charity organization, and uh, a, an organization for tribal religions. And they're giving out 12, they've given out 12 million meals since the beginning of April. So again, that's not in statistics. It's not in the news. You know, we think, oh, but there's a lot happening on the ground and, and in this country the same way. And what is happening in India? We don't hear so much at the moment about what's happening in India in terms of the coronavirus, and in particular, what's happening in, in, in terms of practice, religious belief, and of course, the way of life rather than, uh, rather than doctrine. Yes. Well, the way of life, um, it's very interesting in Indian culture. Self-isolation is quite a, uh, an important practice for a lot of Hindus. <laughs> uh, 
where they go into meditation and they become hermits uh, and they isolate themselves from society in a, as mendicants or, or, or sadhus, holy people. Uh, so that's, that's um, not an unusual practice. A lot of people are being forced to meditate. I'm in contact with a lot of people back and forth and they're all kind of smiling to themselves saying, this is, these are the practices that I've been avoiding all my life and now I'm here with my family and I have to do it. Uh, so there is, there's something a little jolly about that. And people are spending a lot of a lot more time in in their family altar spaces, um, a lot more time meditating and chanting and and time together as a family doing that, which is very interesting, because a lot of them have commented that modern life, whatever that is, um, has has taken us away from the kind of family observance in the home. Um, so a lot of reports about people spending more, having to spend more time together, but worshiping together, praying together, chanting together, which is very interesting. As I say, it's not doctrine. It's just this is just how it's happening. So do you think Hinduism is better uh, equipped to cope with something like this because of its way of life? Um, I don't know if it's better equipped. It's well equipped. Um, Hinduism, Jainism, Buddhism. Um, I, I would actually say that a lot of the religious traditions are quite well equipped uh, to deal with this, but Hinduism um, is well equipped to deal with it. As I say, self-isolation isn't, isn't an issue. Um, personal meditation and retreat and uh, taking, taking this. Uh, the, the thing that a lot of people are saying to me is they're taking it as a time of retreat. They're, they're recognizing this is a good time for me to read scripture, to um, consider my meditation, my internal life. Uh, uh, so that's, that's interesting. That's not the normal conversation I have with some of these people. And finally, in terms of the community in this country, what do you think, if at all, there will be in terms of long-term consequences on the Hindus? One second, I'll get my uh, crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always difficult to say because it is historically the case that during these circumstances, a lot of people come together and social norms change. And after these circumstances, they, they revert <laughs> back to type. So I think we'll all take something from it and with us from this. And, and I would hope, and this, this it can only ever be a hope, that we will um, consider this in communal terms, that this is something about serving others. It's not, it's not, this isn't about ourselves. This, we live in a bigger context and we should always remain aware of that bigger context. And the other thing to take out of it is I am an individual who needs nourishment spiritually and I should give the time that I've given now, I should continue to give some of that time going forward. That, that would be nice. Shonaka Das, thank you very much. Thanks, Ed.